Have you ever used a term or dental abbreviation and you weren't 100% sure what it meant, but maybe you were too embarrassed to ask? Not knowing these abbreviations can directly lead to miscommunication in your office and even to your patients. Don't worry, this video is here to help. We will cover 11 common dental abbreviations you should know. Here at Dental Claim Support, we have been working since 2012 to understand, streamline, and optimize the dental billing process for dental offices. And in that time, we've become experts with the terms and abbreviations that come with the territory of being in the dental industry. Understanding what these abbreviations and acronyms stand for and what they mean will give you and your dental team more confidence in your roles and allows you to clearly communicate with one another and with patients. So by the end of this video, you will understand the 11 common dental abbreviations your dental team needs to know. Let's dive in, and if you have any questions at all, post a comment down below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Number one, CDT, current dental terminology. This is a set of codes with descriptive terms developed and updated annually by the American Dental Association. CDT coding is the official reference for terms that must be used in dental claims to third-party payers, like insurance companies. CDT codes are used whenever you are submitting a dental claim. Each CDT code is related to a dental procedure rendered by the dentist. This may already be present in your dental practice software, but you still need to know how to choose and use them correctly. Knowing how to use and document these claims correctly is the key to getting paid in the most cost-effective way. Number two, EFT, Electronic Funds Transfer. EFTs enable your practice to collect insurance payments without paper checks or physical checks through the transfer of money online. This means when your dental practice gets paid from insurance claims using EFTs, the insurance company's payment is a direct deposit into your bank account versus a check in the mail. Number three, ICD 10CM, International Classification of Diseases, 10th Revision Clinical Modification. This is similar to CBT codes, but these are codes used to document and report procedures that are performed by dentists that are medical in nature. The difference is that the CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, is responsible for updating the ICD-10-CM annually. So in the case of a dental office, it is used when you are filing a medical insurance claim. Number four, EOB, Explanation of Benefits. This is an insurance document provided to the patient and is also attached to the payment received by the practice. The EOB explains the benefits paid in detail by procedure. It's a document telling the patient how their insurance benefits have applied to the procedure, breaking down their cost. Number five, PPO, Preferred Provider Organization. For this type of insurance, patients typically have a choice of going to an office that's in network or out of network. A PPO agreement may specify a copay or an out-of-pocket percentage for the patient to pay, depending on which plan the employer provides or the patient has purchased. Number six, HMO, Health Maintenance Organization. HMOs are insurance plans which usually only cover care from your in-network providers. Patients can typically receive dental treatment for a set amount. You have a set copay amount that you always pay and the HMO covers the remaining or set portion of the cost for your procedure, similar to regular medical insurance. Number seven, COB, coordination of benefits. Sometimes coverage for multiple insurance plans applies when treating a dental patient. COB determines the order in which the insurance benefits are considered for reimbursement. COB rules also determine the order in which the dental practice must file insurance claims. If you want to know more about the rules of COB, check out this video on our channel, link in the description. Number eight, LEAT, least expensive alternative treatment. This is a clause in some patients' insurance plans that will tell your dentist they need to recommend a list of potential treatments for your needed service. 
and insurance will cover the least expensive option. This of course doesn't apply if there is only one option for treatment. Insurance may determine the amount reimbursed based on LEAT. Your payment may reflect the least expensive treatment option. Instead, the more expensive treatment actually performed, also known as a downgrade. Number nine, OOP, out of pocket. The difference between what the patient's procedure costs and the amount their insurance benefits will cover is the out of pocket cost. It's crucial to get this number right in order to communicate an accurate cost to your patient, or else they can be understandably upset about getting an unexpected bill from you. Number 10, DSO, Dental Service Organization. A DSO buys a dental practice and then supports the non-clinical operations behind the scenes. This means the DSO is more than likely handling the billing at the dental practice along with the marketing and anything administrative. Number 11, FFS, fee for service. FFS is a revenue model for a dental practice that collects the entire cost of a procedure from the patient. Then that patient is reimbursed by their insurance with a check in the mail a few weeks later, based on the insurance claim. A fee for service dental practice model means that the provider is not participating or credentialed with any insurance companies. Because the provider is not in contract with any dental insurance, or PPO, the fees being charged to the patient would be the standard office fees. You can now feel confident knowing the 11 common dental abbreviations. Understanding these allows you to communicate to your patients more effectively and bring even more value to your practice. Continue your dental billing education by heading over to Dental Claims Academy, link in the description. And if you and your dental practice have any questions, the other link in the description will let you schedule a call with us here at Dental Claim Support. And as always, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos.